I'm Michael Puck, and you are tuned into the Animal Innovation Show. Today's Animal Innovation Show is brought to you by... Are you having a hard time with the loss of your pet? It's okay to grieve. For many, it is like losing a best friend and a special part of the family. And all too often, pet parents have a hard time finding a proper way to honor their memory. Let Your Love Grow helps you honor the special bond you had with your pet through their living memorials. These living memorials are one of a kind. These are cremated ashes transformed to life-giving plant mixtures. What a better way to honor the loss of your pet than to give life and help save the environment. Keep your pet close by planting a living memorial with Let Your Love Grow today. Learn more today by visiting LetYourLoveGrow.com. Excellent job. Thank you, Michael. So why don't you start us off and tell us who you are and how you're innovating and helping animals? I'm a photographer. I'm a dog photographer, but really I was initially a dog walker. I was trying to volunteer and help and support the animal shelter. And then I realized that walking three dogs in over the course of an hour doesn't really make much of an impact. So I decided to find something that could help more dogs over the same period of time, because all of us have limited time and resources. Mm -hmm. And so I started taking pictures of dogs, now 15 to 20 dogs over the course of an hour. And I was always getting super excited when these pictures got $10,000, $20,000 <laughs> likes on Facebook, because it was a surefire sign that the dogs would get adopted. But with so much attention on social media, it didn't take long until dog owners and cat owners came to me and say, hey, can you also take pictures of my dog? Sure. I said, yeah, sure, but I will charge for that. Yeah. And so I started charging and I used the funds from the private photo sessions in order to pay for veterinary care of shelter and rescue dogs. That's where I started. When I started selling my work to local businesses, I quickly realized that there was a huge potential, but I saw myself really being the bottleneck in the process because I have limited hours that I can really direct towards that effort. I have a full-time job. So I wanted to come up with an idea that would make it scalable. And so a year and a half ago, I reached out to a number of what I would call internationally celebrated dog photographers. Now dog photography is a very young profession in itself, but there are some amazing talents out there. And I reached out to about 20 of them to share an idea. And the idea was if we can get together and each of you contribute three to five of your best pieces, and then we build an online gallery and we approach businesses and we make that work available to businesses. And then the proceeds from that are being used in order to support nonprofits and to save animals, would that be something you would be interested in? And the feedback was overwhelmingly positive because there is no one out there who is a dog photographer who is not also a dog lover because you don't end up working with dogs all day long if you don't love dogs. Yeah. And, and so that energy was just absolutely amazing. And the first of this year officially um, put in place what's now called the Global Dog Art Gallery. And uh, it's a representation of about 20, and this will, will grow over time, but about 20 internationally celebrated dog photographers from 12 different countries. And so this is being promoted to businesses, small businesses, larger businesses, because especially after the pandemic, and I think I can officially say after at this point, is that okay? Great, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so let's hope again, but um, it is something that businesses really trying to hone into, how can I create environments that are warm, that are welcoming, environments where people feel comfortable, uh, environments that help me to connect with the person on the other side. Um, businesses want to move away from a just transactional perspective. They rely on building relationships. And, and dog wallet in an office for a financial advisor or an accountant or a hairdresser um, can be that spark, can be that platform on which two individuals then connect. So Michael, tell people the website again and, and maybe how if they want to yeah. become an affiliate and get involved, they can 
check that out. Yeah, absolutely. The address, so the name of the gallery is the Global Dog Art Gallery. While this was a little long for URL, it's the glo it's globaldogart.com. So www.globaldogart.com. Uh, on there, you can also get a hold of me or you can find me on LinkedIn. That's where I spend most of my time. And just look for Michael Puck. There are not too many that are willing to carry that name. So that's <laughs> that's an easy way to find me as well. Well, Michael, I'm, I'm really excited to see where you're going to take this. Is, is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap things up today? Being a nonprofit, I have a board of directors. And so we get together every so frequently to discuss where we will take this nonprofit, where we would like to take this nonprofit. Our goal is to save 1 million dogs by 2030. So that's eight years from now. And I think a vital step to get there is to promote dog wall art to 5,000 businesses in the next five years. So this is kind of the immediate runway that we're on because um, I have actually something coming up in this, this fall that I'm very excited about. Uh, Chris, I might actually mention that right now. And this is a TED talk. Uh, at, at TEDx High Point in North Carolina, where this will be the core of the conversation or the, the talk. And hopefully this is then one additional means of getting the word out. But uh, I'm also very active on, on LinkedIn. But our goal is to save 1 million dogs by 2030. And I believe, I believe that this is very, very possible because that should be just the first milestone, big milestone, obviously on the journey, because I think there's much more possible than that, actually. Wow, I love that. That is quite the big vision, and it sounds like you've got a plan to get there. It, it is a very scary vision. So um, this produces butterflies in my stomach. Going and, and doing a, TED talk, a TEDx talk is also not something that I feel sure. like doing tomorrow, but it's still a few months out until that's happening. But yeah, I think uh, this, this is very exciting and I'll put a lot of energy in there. I have a lot of supporters in the field as well, photographers that are excited about it, businesses that are excited. So I think this could really make a substantial difference in, in helping animals. Well, Michael, I totally agree. I'm, I'm so excited that you came on to talk about it and to think that it just started with you walking dogs at a shelter and it's and it's led to this. And as I wrap up our show here, I mean, that's what I always love to remind our viewers and listeners is it just starts with an idea. And Michael is walking dogs at a shelter and said, you know, I can do more. And it led into something more and more and more. And now he's going to focus on saving a million dogs in the next eight years. So maybe you're watching or listening and you've got an idea for something that can help animals and the people that love them. We want to know about it. Go to innovations.show. We'd love to have you come on the show. And if you're looking for a way to get involved like Michael did, become a Dubertier. You can go to dubert.com where you can sign up to be a transporter or a foster. You can even be a photographer. Uh, there's so many rescues and shelters across the country that can really use your help. So dubert.com is the place to go to get involved. So Michael, thank you again for coming on. I really enjoyed it. And I'm absolutely behind you 100% to help you hit that goal. Chris, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure. And um, thank you so much for having me on the show.